you know, with everything that's happening right now in, in the world and particularly in the United States, um, I just thought that this was an important uh, question to answer, questions that have been asked by the IBD community, but I think it's very timely, just around how inequities impact health um, in the context of COVID-19, um, but these inequities impact health um, regardless. And I just want to share with you data from the CDC. We can look at um, outcomes that are, are happening uh, in the United States. And a lot of this data comes from uh, New York City, where we see amongst some of the highest um, epicenter of, of COVID cases. And, and when you look at the racial and ethnic divisions within a, a community, um, you can see that um, the proportion of the society that's, um, that is white compared to black versus Hispanic. Now, if you now look at what are the proportion that end up in a hospital with COVID, you can start to see that there is a disproportionate representation compared to the community makeup, where we see that, that if you are black living in, in America, you're much more likely to get to be hospitalized for, for COVID. Um, and if you take this statistic out to the most important statistics, which is um, uh, mortality, um, you can start to see that if people who are, are black have a much higher likelihood of dying from COVID compared to Hispanics and Latinos who are still at a very high rate as compared to white in, in Asian populations. Um, now, I'm a gastroenterologist, um, and so I don't do justice to social injustices, um, but I do want to uh, quote and bring you to an article that I think was a brilliantly written article by a colleague named uh, Dr. Professor Nancy Krieger, who's a professor of social epidemiology at the Harvard School of Public Health. She was interviewed by the New Yorker, and this is a, um, a brilliant article I, I want you to read. And, and when she was asked about inequities in, in healthcare, um, and I'm just going to read what she quoted as saying. So when you think about something like coronavirus, you have to think about who's exposed in the first place and where they're exposed at work, at home, and what are their conditions. You have to think about if they're exposed, do they get infected? You have to think about if they get infected, do they get ill? And, have, and you have to think about if they're ill, do they actually die? And really what this gets down to are what are the social and economic determinants that drive um, outcomes for, for individuals. Um, and there are a number of different factors that have been identified in studies um, that have been raised in, uh, in this New Yorker article that, that Nancy Kruger was interviewed on. And it really relates to things like population density. If you're more likely to live in a very dense environment, an apartment building, uh, we might be a multi-generational household with um, a number of different people, um, your likelihood of being exposed to um, to a virus like coronavirus uh, increases. And then if you're at a low socioeconomic status, um, if you're in poverty, you might lack access to services. You may even lack access to health insurance. Um, we see that very commonly in Canada, but in, sorry, in the US, but even in Canada where people may like, lack access to drug insurance um, based on their, on their economic status. And then often people, depending on where they're coming from, the types of individuals that they are, they may work in um, essential services that force them to be a much more high likelihood of being exposed to coronavirus. They may be working in cabs and Ubers, they may be uh, working at uh, in retail and grocers where they have to do their jobs and they're at much more likely contact. Um, and often individuals, particularly for example black individuals, they have uh, comorbidities like hypertension and diabetes that increases the risk of um, having a bad outcome if they do get exposed to. And I think what we've seen throughout this past week and, and historically over, over the decades um, is that there are systemic inequalities that are racially driven and these do impact health outcomes um, and, and lead to um, disparity in, in outcomes. Um, this is a very classic picture that talks a little bit about the difference between equality and equity. And when I think about COVID, I think about COVID as being equally opportunistic virus. It will infect you regardless of your race, religion, color of your skin, your gender. It doesn't matter who you are, it will infect you. But it is not an equitable virus. It is a virus that does have difference in outcomes based on gender, based on your socioeconomic status based on your race, religion, your color of your skin. We see that in countless times, not just in the COVID literature, but also in, in IBD literature. And we, we've known this in the IBD world where we have drugs that are extremely expensive, that there are individuals and groups of individuals who are less likely to access these drugs. And because of that, have different outcomes in IBD. And when we look at kind of the COVID lens, we see that outcomes in IBD patients can be worse in regions of the countries where, where there might be poorer countries. And these disparities in outcomes happen 
both within a country stratified by socioeconomic status, but also between countries that are rich and poor. And these are things that are very important for all of us, the entire IBD community, from our patients to the physicians, to our charitable organizations, to the academics, to recognize that these um, disparities occur uh, and to be able to address them um, uh, in order to improve outcomes in 